presently practicing at the Leelavati Lord Clinic in Puja Hospital and Sport Med in Mumbai. Recently faculty for the first AO Trauma Master course and then rest at the Davos. Vishwa seems to run away at the right time. He kya topic de diya hai? External fixators, I did so much. And in my previous two visits here, probably I harped and harped and harped about external fixators and said, do this, this is the best thing in the world. And I have to retract a lot of that because a lot of that is not necessary. It's possible, but not necessary. Probably overkill in some cases. So we need to reserve our in, um, uh, uh, indications for external fixators. There are better ways of doing it. Patient compliance is much better. So therefore, I'm going to run through this. Uh, it's important for those who are using external fixators and as Shaila showed in the morning that there are indications which help it. First, I must put the record right. A brief history of external fixators, mini external fixators in India. This gentleman is one of the most understated gentlemen in the country for external fixators in the hand. Nobody even knows him as an external fixator man. He was doing his residency when we were uh, in uh, Nanavati as residents. And he told Dr. Joshi that in my thesis, and I think Nanerya Saab was his, I don't know who was his teacher, uh, but he said that in my thesis on external fixators for the leg, I included two cases, I think it is two cases, for of external fixators in the hand. And at that time, Dr. Joshi was struggling with uh, dental cement as a mode of fixing pins inside the bone. So we put bo pins inside the bone and from the outside, we would build a bridge of dental cement which was not modular but would fix and hold and I remember Bruce Connolly had come and taken these photographs and some of these cases are in Bruce Connolly's uh, atlas from Australia and so Dr. Joshi said please bring me what you used and his brother is uh, used to sell electrical uh, equipment and the plug point clamps the brass clamps inside the plug points are what he used with his ingenuity, he drilled an ex extra hole, which then we borrowed the technique and which then became known as Joshi's external fixator, which in 1990, when Vashil Wood was visiting there in Manipal during the hand con conference, we presented it for the first time. And that, if you can recognize, is Dr. Lahad standing at the back. Uh, subsequent to which, we went on to develop and perfect the Joshi's external stabilization system which became extremely famous for which there were some problems to overcome which we started working a little bit with the surgical company that was selling the clamps and eventually came up with the Umex fixator which had a teardrop hole and we got it tested and the teardrop hole changed the stability by 240%. So by doing that, you increase, as soon as you tighten it, you have two forces acting against one, and that makes it about 240% better, which was tested, and we found that it was very stable. So finally, we had this knurled rods, we had these uh, uh, the teardrop shape, or the inverted teardrop shape, and we also had converted it from brass to stainless steel, and that gave it much more strength and acceptability in the Western world as well. A lot of theses have been written in the, uh, uh, in the MCH and other places in Portugal and other places where this fixator has been used. <coughs> so these are the general indications for external fixators. You can use it for almost any fracture. You can indicate it for anything you want. My indication today is a very simple indication. When I get afraid of a fracture, when I see an x-ray and the first thing that comes to my head is, oh my God, that is the one that I'm going to use an external fixator. Every other fracture is simple. I say, oh, yaha se wire dal diya, idhar se fix kar diya, ye kar diya. But when I say, oh, oh, fixator. So my indication is, oh, oh, fractures. External fixators, of course, open fractures. You know all of this. But you have to have a practical thing that Man ki ghanti tang karke baja de. And that is what it is. When you saw that Shailesh's fracture, the one which was the knockdown fracture from the Wohler side, there's nothing you can do for that. That's the one that you'll fix with an external fixator. And Lamcham TO called them the non fixables. Lamcham TO can fix a one millimeter bone fragment. He fixes anything that is there. 
And if you see his fixations, they're just the most beautiful fixations. And if you see the results, they're the most fantastic results. I asked him a question. Sir, do you do all these fixations yourself or do you allow your residents to do it? And he said, none of them have been done by anyone except me. I cannot even allow my second in command to do it. Which tells you how much technical difficulty is there in handing down that. And there is where external fixators come in. When you know that you don't deal with it daily, don't open up and put large screws and things like that. Then use an external fixator. Components are fairly simple. There's just clamps and rods distractors you need to pass wires now the thing is if you pass good wires they look very beautiful but if you pass too many or if you pass them in the wrong place they can be as ugly as this so you need to wear, know where to pass so that it looks nice and it works well so what we did was we tried to find out what is the safe corridor there is no safe corridor in the hand everywhere there's tissue there's tissue that's moving there's tissue that's supplying there's tissue that's taking back information there's there's no place to put a fixator. So we need to put the fixator properly. So what we did was in, uh, in the times when Manu Kothari Saab used to help us, we went there and put in these things in two or three cadavers, put the wires in, dissected out everything, found out how far we were, etc. And now it's fairly common uh, information that you don't impale moving structures. You try and stay away from them. The extensor hood is a safe place to put wires. The lateral aspect of the finger is a good place to put wires. The lateral aspect of the radius is a good pa place to pass the wires. The medial aspect of the ulna is subcutaneous and is a good place to put wires. Knowing all of this, you do not violate any other place. So that's a very simple thing to understand. You must know that when you put wires in the first web or in, in the region of the snuff box that it can impale the superficial branch of the radial nerve and if the patient has uh, symptoms, you must remove that wire early. Don't let it linger. So check for that always. The veins can get impaled and you can see that happening in this one specimen. This happened in two of our three specimens that we had cut in those days and this has great importance. It may bleed continuously, just a two millimeter wire and it's bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. I had to attend uh, a Wiroc conference when there were no mobile phones. My paper was there on that day and there was a call from Nanavati hospital. We had done a club foot fixator and the registrar kept saying, Dr. Warrior, I think you need to come and see. And I said, yeah, dekh le, yaar, pin dala hua hai, thoda gauze laga de. So, Gamji laga de. So, in the night he called me and said, Sir, do Gamji ho gaye. Still, my paper was more important than do Gamji. So, I went for my paper and during lunch time, he came from behind, the tall chap, Dr. Shetty, came from behind and just grabbed me and he said, if you're not coming now, I'm going to just drag you from here. So, we went there and we saw this was still bleeding continuously. We opened the whole thing, it was bleeding continuously. We opened it out and we saw we had cut a vein exactly like this and it was bleeding through the night and we had to transfuse blood for an external fixator. Okay, why K wires and not threaded pins? Well, this question has been asked too often and I don't have an answer. There was an answer in some paper in the 1980s by Roy, Kaba and Meals who said that under the size of 1.5 or 1.8 millimeters, threaded pins are not very effective. It's not very much different. The pullout strength is almost the same, so therefore it doesn't really matter. Also, if you have to go across a bone and you're tightening a threaded pin, the soft tissues get wound up. If you want to unwind them, you've got to reverse. If you reverse it, the pin backs out. With a K wire, that doesn't happen. You can reverse it, the, uh, the, the, you can uh, unwind the threads, I mean you can unwind the K wire in the same spot, so the winding up of the soft tissues is relaxed. It is something like this. Now if it is wound up like this, if I just unwind, my K wire stays in the same spot, but the tissues unwind, so they become relaxed. If it was the threaded pin, it would back out as well. So threaded pins have a disadvantage. A lot of fixator systems depend upon threaded pins. So under the size of 1.5, 1.8, it's not really important. And that's what happens with the soft tissues on the inside with a shan screw or a threaded pin. Whereas with the K wire, you can smoothen it out easily. Different types of K wires are available, but use the short trocar tip. And the reason for that is when you go outside on the other side, if you take a cross section at the point where the pin comes out, and if the pin is a tip like that, a long trocar tip, 
then so much of that area which has been drilled out will be empty. So the whole trocar has to go beyond the far cortex to fill up that hole so that the whole K wire fills up that hole so that there is not much movement in between. That means that much of that pointed sharp tip is in the soft tissues beyond the bone. And you know that everything is moving, there's blood supply, there's nerve supply, so you don't want that. So keep it as a short trocar tip. Don't try to use the bayonet tips. Uh, drill, of course, now we all have mechanized drills. We don't use the hand drill anymore. A wire driver is so much more convenient. Well, this wire driver has visited Germany more than Dr. Lard and me put together. Because every time it got spoiled, it was sent to Germany. This was one of the best wire drivers I've ever used. It's the AO wire driver, but unfortunately it fell ill so often that it used to be carted to Germany and then it would come back. It would be repaired and again it would go back and it would come back. So finally we've given up on this one, but it's one of the most handiest K wire drivers not in use right now. You need to seat yourself in a place where you can look at the C arm and you need to, this is, I'm using a Manman drill. So that's a very difficult drill to handle. In the old form, the new ones are better. There's also a fellow standing there with coolant. So when you're putting pins in, always have coolant. Anything that drills, grinds, mills, produces heat, you don't want heat there, therefore you keep on dripping this. This has to happen and this photograph was not taken to show it to you. This photograph was taken for some other reason, but I think it represents exactly the, the atmosphere within the theater. And that's important for your pin track or your pin bone or your pin skin interface. You need to make a small cruciate incision. And why cruciate? A lot of people think warrior matlab Catholic hoga. You must be remembering Jesus Christ and saying, oh Lord, etc. It's not. I'm a Hindu, but not that it makes any difference. My incision is still a cruciate incision. The reason is, if you need to extend it, you can just put in a stab knife. And the cruciate incision is 3 to 4 millimeters across. And then if you want to extend it, why would you want to extend it? Because if the skin... Uh, Tends like this. Tenting of the skin should not happen. The skin should drape the wire at the end of having placed it. Simple principle. Don't let tenting occur. When tenting occurs, there's a fold of skin there which gets less blood supply, which has more sweat, which can collect crap over there and that will get infected and there you're going to have problems. So don't allow that to happen. Let it completely, this is the same uh, pin track, which has been released with a stab knife, a little extra cut on that side, so you don't have difficulty in finding that uh, path or direction, you made that cruciate incision. So it's a very small skin cruciate incision, don't go deep, you don't want to touch the nerves in that area. Creating a frame, well, you start planning your frame in advance, okay? So if you've got two fracture fragments, use the maximum length available in the safe zone for putting your pins in. So if you put the pins too close to each other, then it's not a very stable construct. But if you put them as far possible, so you put near to the fracture and far away from the fracture as possible, the stability increases. It's pretty obvious when you see this. I don't know whether it will work. Ah, it does. So when you bring this closer and closer, it's obviously going to get unstable. It's a very simple thing. So the further out you hold something that's long, that much more stability you get. So you find the length that is safe for you to use. The next thing is, once you got it on, how far should the rod be? Well, the rod should not be too far away. That's the free bending stretch of the K wire. So the longer the rod, it's like a big lever which can move like that. The closer you get to the frame, the, uh, to the bone, the better, but leave enough space so that it doesn't impinge on the skin. Okay, so it should move closer with enough space between the skin. Two rods are better than one. No question about this. So once you've got all of that in, when you're tightening, you need to pre-stress. These things have gone out of most of the books, but the old AO external fixator books had this written in great detail. And the reason for pre-stressing, pre-stressing is just bringing the pins slowly closer to each other. They've done away with this because they've now got radial preload pins, which are pins which are tapering, etc. But we still use preloading, and I think it's important because if you have two parallel wires, if you have two parallel wires like this two, and if you have a wheel in between, 
the wheel can actually move because the diameter or the space between the two wires is the same the wheel can move this way and that way consider this to be the bone and you'll realize that the uh, wires cannot hold too well but on the other hand if you bend the wires towards each other the diameter between the two rods goes down the space between the two rods goes down the wheel just cannot move the segment of bone that you captured between your two wires is now in that position cannot move from side to side and therefore it becomes more stable so pre-stressing is important how much pre-stress not till it bends because if you understand pre-stressing there is in this corner there are some osteocytes and osteoblasts sitting over there right in that axilla between the wire and the place where you're putting the pressure down so in that axilla those cells are going to get crushed and they're going to get necrosed and you're going to get pin bone interface problems so don't pre-stress too much just a little bit and that's good enough okay two planes are better than one again something that's very very common you got to have the fixator when you have collateral or bilateral fixators you need to put two frames now quickly a couple of frames I'm going to just show you now here's a fixator that was used for a fracture on the index finger which has one free surface and one surface with neighbor fingers so you can put a lateral frame on this just a lateral frame all the principles two pins two pins far apart two rods and you have a fairly good looking frame okay if you can fix in two axes which means in x and y axis this now what you saw is in one axis so in a case like this you have a fixator put in to fuse the joint and you see a pin vertical pin coming in from the top and that is something that gives you better stability once you've done this you must remember the alignment which uh, dr kotwal had shown about the fingers not scissoring your nails should look absolutely in the same sequence like an asbestos sheet so that all four of them look exactly the same and it's not tilted round so you keep the mp joints flexed and look at the nails from the front and it should look like an asbestos sheet perfectly aligned and then you'll get a good result so here's x and y axis in more clear clarity so you've got one pin on the other side and one pin on the x axis one on the y three on the x axis one on the y axis and you connect them you get a much stronger stable for, uh, fixator only in special indications you can't use this everywhere you can bend the connecting rod to give you functional position of the joint so long as you maintain the joint space you can bend it the way you want so you can bend it to give you a good functional position so patient can start holding and using the hand with the fixator on absolutely beautiful when you use fixators like this you need to keep the fixator away because it's got a neighboring finger so you go into the dorsal lateral plane now when you go into the dorsal lateral plane remember if the patient has got a wound on the volar side then which side would you put your pins you would put your pins on the side towards the wound and not towards the safe or the unhurt side or the uninjured side the reason is very simple if there is a wound on this side of the finger and if you angle your pins like that you are aiming to get the pin to go and hit the neurovascular bundle on that side if that side is injured and the neurovascular bundle may or may not be injured you don't run the additional risk of injuring an uninvolved neurovascular bundle if you put the fixator on the other side the wound is on that side this neurovascular bundle is functioning you've come with your pins and you've impaled it khatam ho gaya finger so you can be the cause of a finger not surviving if you didn't plan your fixator when you have multiple fingers involved you need a hand frame so we've seen individual frames now we're going into hand frames hand frames require only two pins in the metacarpal on the radial side two pins in the metacarpals on the ulnar side normally involving two two metacarpals so two and three metacarpal from the radial side four and five from the ulnar side and you can build an entire frame there are no pins in any of the fingers and yet the fractures are completely well aligned so you don't need to pin each one of them and you can in such a very complex injury get a fairly good result so it is basically a portable traction unit it is modular but it is not and also it's not a non-union machine as was uh, as it fell into disrepute with the tibia and 
the main thing to understand is distraction is not recommended in acute fractures at all. So let's look at a couple of wrong ones. Don't put a fixator like this and say, I fixator kar diya usko. This is distracted. There's only one pin in each fragment. It's not going to work. This one, one pin came out completely. Here again, one pin. Why? You've not even reduced the fracture. That's not a reduced fracture. So the pin is just in there. And some of these are done by me, by the way. You see that? So you don't got the correction of what Shailesh was showing today morning. Unless you get that correction, this, this fixator is useless. So you can't just put a fixator and say, I have fixator kar diya usko, sir. And you send an AP view to me and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, wow, fantastic, good morning, thank you very much. And I'll send you one more WhatsApp for you. So distractors are never used in acute injuries at all. Never, never, never. In acute injuries, no why you want distraction? You can give traction and reduce anything. So no distractors at all. How long to keep the frame on? Well, you can keep the frame on for three to four weeks when fractures will heal. This fellow kept it for six years. And the policeman brought him to me because he was cheating people for something. And he finally got caught. And as soon as he got caught, he opened this and he showed the policeman and said, Mera treatment chalo hai, hospital chalo. So they came to the hospital and said, this is your patient. I said, I don't know this man. He didn't have papers. He had a big beard and he was looking very dirty and unkempt. And this is what his terminal phalanx has come out. But look at the pin tracks. Six years pin tracks, absolutely pristine. Wonderful. So he went to jail. I ran behind him and I stopped him just outside the clinic. And I took this photograph just so that I remind myself that pins can remain for a long time. Don't keep them all for six years. But you can do that. The importance is pin track care. The importance is passing the wires. Importance is pre-stressing and keeping the frame stable. Okay. Now we sometimes carry our indications a bit too far. This is in a vulture's wing. I do a lot of veterinary work with Dr. Vakankar in Bombay. And this we put on a vulture who was uh, injured. And uh, unfortunately the vulture was kept next to the leopard's cage in Sanjay Gandhi National Park. There are six or seven leopards there. And the leopards kept on growling. The vulture got so scared it stopped eating and drinking went into septicemia and died. So I don't know the result of this one, whether it was good or not. But fixators can be used in various indications. Radial club hand, club foot. There's so many indications. Dr. Lard uses it for upper tibia, for pilon fractures of the ankle, for fractures of the humerus, for fractures around the elbow. Ram Prabhu is pro propagating a lot of these injuries being treated very well. The important thing is first get a perfect reduction, not an acceptable reduction get a perfect reduction. The fixator can hold it. So your job of the fixator is just holding a good uh, uh, reduction. The job of the fixator is not to get you a reduction. Once you get that in your mind, you know exactly where you can use a fixator. Thank you very much.